Have you ever wondered why some rooms in the evening look so much more inviting than others? Let me tell you a secret. It's all about lamps. I really love lamps. They're such a turn on. And in this video, I'm going to go through eight simple design rules that you can use to perfectly light up your home so it feels comfortable, cozy, and perfectly functional. Hi everyone, I'm Bai Xu. I'm a licensed architect. A few years ago, I graduated from Cambridge University. And since then, I've been specializing in residential and interior design. At the moment, I'm also making YouTube videos that shares all of my design knowledge so we can all use it to make our homes really, really nice. The first rule is to never, ever, ever, ever rely on just the overhead light. The biggest mistake you can make with lighting, apart from having no light, is to just have one single source of light in the ceiling. It casts a very unflattering uniform light that makes everyone and everything look kind of terrible, and it makes your space feel as cozy as a dentist's office. The uniform light is made to mimic light from the sky, but it feels unnatural to us because the light outside is actually never ever even, but dappled with areas of shadow and light that's constantly in movement and it changes in intensity and it moves around and that is a very beautiful source of light to be under. It's also a fact of human nature that we like to gather around light sources in groups. Think about a group of people gather around a campfire or a couple sitting in front of a fireplace or a group of people at a dining table sitting around some candle lights. All of these different light sources basically create groups of light and having just one single light source in the ceiling will not do that to your room. So instead of focusing on just having one light, try to create a lot of different light sources around the room. As for how many lights in the room, it really depends on the size and layout of the space. But as a rule of thumb, I would say go for between five to seven light sources per room. And if you have an extra huge room, maybe go for something around nine. This sounds like a lot of different light sources, but it's actually really not. Let me show you. Let's take this one bedroom as an example. The first light source would obviously be the ceiling light, a bedside lamp on either side of the bed. In the corner of the room, you might have an armchair, and so you should place a reading light next to this armchair. On top of your dresser, you might be also interested to place two table lamps. If you then want to add to the romantic ambience of your bedroom, you could strain some fairy lights, or you can have a couple of candle lights dotted all around your room. So you see, when I say five, to seven lights, it sounds like a lot, but it's really achievable per room. Now that we've established the quantity of light you need per space, let's talk about the different types of lighting. In a room, it's likely that you have four different categories of light, and you should aim to have at least one type of light from each category in each room. We have general lighting. This can be a ceiling lamp that spreads ambient light all over the room. And then we have task lighting, which is the type of light you use to perform a very specific task, like um, a table lamp while you're at your desk, uh, a floor lamp that is perfect for your reading corner, maybe some strip lighting above the kitchen counter so you can see better when you're cutting things. Spot lighting is used to direct your attention at very specific features in your home. This can be a work of art on the wall, some pictures, and then you have the atmospheric lighting. These are things like fairy lights, string lights, basically things that you don't really need to illuminate the space, but it just gives it a nice cozy glow. Let's bring up a photo of a bathroom to see how we could light the space using these four categories of lamps. First, for general lighting, I think we'll install some ceiling lights, so at least the space can be illuminated if we need to search for a missing toothbrush or a cat that's hiding underneath a bathtub. For task lighting, we could have some lights that's hanging on either side of the mirror. You know, look at your face properly while you're doing your makeup so you don't poke yourself in the eye, um, trim out whatever nose hair that you want to get rid of. <laughs> Not talking about from personal experience, obviously. And for spotlighting, we could install some strips of lighting behind the mirror so they reflect off the walls. I think we could have some dimmable lights next to the bathtub or a couple of candles so you can soak your worries away whilst next to a fire. Now that we've established the quantity and types of lighting that we need in a room, let's discuss where they need to go. Don't just randomly place lights all over the place like you're playing a game of darts. Although in darts, you also don't randomly place things because you're aiming at a very specific target. Hmm, 
Instead, you should identify if there are specific zones or functions in the room and then place light according to each of these functions. If you have a large dining table that you want people to gather around, place a lot of pendant lights above the dining table to create this pool of light over it so people are kind of drawn towards this light, like moths to a flame. If you have a particular armchair that you want to use for reading, make sure it has a light next to it. If you spent three months' salary on a gigantic TV screen and you really want people to notice it and pay attention to it, even when it's not in use, Put some lights behind the TV screen and have that on all the time. Basically, put lights on places where you want people to gather, where you want to draw attention, and where you want to perform a very specific task. The colour of the light in a room is also really important and can vastly affect your mood. Bright and strong colours like blue, red and green distorts how people look and affect the way we interact with others, so it's best to avoid using these garish colours at home. But they can be appropriate for creating a dance floor at a party or for, you know, being festive and decorating during Christmas time. But let's be honest, I don't actually love these super colourful lights for Christmas. I prefer just the soft yellow glow that reminds you of candles. When it comes to choosing the colour temperature of the lights in your home, you should go for something that's a warm white to make it feel very comfortable and cozy, like a fire, but less hot. Color temperatures is measured in kelvins and determines whether the light is warm or cool. The lower the kelvin number, the warmer the color, and the higher the number, the cooler and bluer the color. When buying light bulbs, you can usually find a description that tells you the color temperature you're getting. For a warm and cozy home, I would recommend a temperature between 2700 to 3000 kelvins. On the other hand, if you have like a workshop in your home or somewhere where you basically just don't want to sleep, you can then use a higher color temperature. This is why in a lot of spaces like hospitals and offices, you don't feel very warm and cozy because of the color light bulbs they use. It's very, very white and bright. There are three ways for light to come out of this magical thing called the light bulb and illuminate your space. Direct, indirect, and diffused. Direct light is for task lighting. Like when you switch on a torch and you shine it all around, this is direct light. Indirect light is used more for accent lighting. So this is when you project a light against the wall and then you have some soft light that bounces off the surface. Diffused light is when the beam of light is filtered through a lampshade. It's my favorite type of light because it creates a softness and bask your space in a gentle glow. I mean, getting this rule wrong is not the end of the world because you can always just move to different light sources around to create the type of light that you want. Wireframe lampshade, rattan lampshades, and all sorts of lampshades where it has a pattern and perforations will cast very strong shadows from your light source. So you should really consider whether having this pattern of light and shadow is something you want. A few years ago, I got this really, really cute lampshade from Maid, but the inside of the lampshade was coated in copper, which means that no matter what light bulb I used, the light that did come out of this was always a little bit too red. And this difference in color temperature from this lampshade versus all the other lamps in the room was incredibly jarring. So I had to get rid of it and replace it with a different lampshade. So think about the effect this lampshade would have on your light source and how it would make you feel before jumping in for the trendy aesthetic of the object. So those are the eight rules I use to create a cozy ambience in my home and other people's homes. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll try to explain any confusing points that I may have badly explained. If you're interested in more topics like this, be sure to check out my other videos on how to create a beautiful home and stay subscribed because I will be continuously churning out YouTube videos so we can all make beautiful spaces together. Thank you. Bye.